Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. This is another in our series of chalk talks on various technologies uh, affecting the storage industry. Today we're going to talk about PCIe SSD versus appliance SSD. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Texas Memory Systems. And let's, so let's jump in. Uh, PCIe SSD has gotten a lot of attention here in the last few weeks. There's been a lot of announcements around the technology. Uh, and everybody seems to be very uh, interested in that market. Uh, Appliance-based SSDs are sort of the, uh, the old dog in the race. They've been around for a long time. Uh, and uh, so it probably makes sense to kind of do a comparison between the two of them. So let's talk first, why would you want to use PCIe SSD? Well, the number one reason is going to be performance. If I draw out a uh, server motherboard, uh, typically, you know, it'll have a, a, a number of PCIe slots. Uh, it'll have uh, a couple of or more uh, CPU processor slots and power supplies, things like that. Uh, and then, of course, it has a connection uh, over to uh, some, some form of hard drive storage. So the ad advantage that PCIe uh, SSDs will have is that because they go right in the slot, they have a direct PCIe channel, essentially, to the processor. So very little uh, latency. Uh, now, you've, you've got to be a little careful uh, because some PCIe SSDs are actually SSDs that uh, are not PCIe-based. They're SAS or SATA-based. They're, they're essentially a, a RAID controller with SSD on them. And so they still have to go through the whole storage protocol layer. So that's something to be... Uh, cognizant of is you know pros and cons of both but the for the native PCIe the ones we're talking about for performance we're talking about things that are native and have a direct connection uh, to, the, to the processor so the the advantage of these again especially in a particular point project very simple to install if you have one or three or four servers that are having performance from put one of these in uh, have it set up as a cache or as a, a static storage area and and go to town so uh, very, very doable. So let's talk about why not uh, SSD. So um, from a why not perspective, the, the number one problem is it's hard to share. So, uh, you know, most environments aren't a single server, so we might have uh, multiple servers out here. And they might need to have shared access uh, to the uh, SSD itself. So the ability to be able to uh, share that access uh, becomes very important and that's where an appliance approach uh, might make more sense. The other um, scenario is the usability or efficiency of using the capacity on the board itself. Most uh, SSD cards will range uh, in the anywhere from 200 gigs to a terabyte in capacity. Well, and that's fine if you can use it, but if you, if you have sort of the classic example, you're just going to load a few hot files onto it, or, or if your active data set for that particular server isn't anywhere near 200 gigs, uh, then you might be buying a 200 gig drive and really only using 100 gigs of it. Now, in a caching environment, you'll still fill it up, but how much of that data is really flowing through there it becomes the question. So that, that's you know, part of the challenge. It, it might make more sense in an appliance approach. Number one, these can go on a network, a storage network, and then they can be shared. So that this now could be subdivided. Let's say this server right here had a very small use case, uh, had some very specific files that needed to be accelerated, maybe some database files. Uh, we could just give it a very small, uh, maybe 25 gig uh, partition. Right, let's say this one did have a big one. We could maybe give that one a one terabyte partition. Uh, this one a 200 gig partition. And this one down here, oh, I don't know, a 300 gig partition. So the, the point being is that you could uh, directly uh, slice up this style state memory exactly as it needs to be. Now remember, SSD is a uh, more expensive technology than hard drives, and so you want to waste as little as you possibly can. And so the idea of being able to share and divide here 
uh, might be very attractive in, in uh, certain situations. So that's um, kind of the disadvantages uh, to it. The other uh, disadvantage to PCIe SSD is going to be size. So let's say this is a, a very small server. Many of the PCIe SSD slots are uh, full size, full height, and won't fit in the more denser 1U, 2U servers. Uh, so in this case, it might make more sense to uh, be able to access it off of a shared network uh, that might be fiber channel or something like that. So th those are really the key differences. Uh, PCIe, uh, server-based, very good for that sort of offload caching type of work. Uh, also good for uh, very specific application use. Uh, an appliance-based system, uh, very good for uh, shared access when you've got a, a database application that has multiple servers or, or a, some sort of a rendering or anything like that that's going to have multiple servers needing to access the same data area at the same time. Uh, or uh, an environment where you want to be very efficient in how you carve up the solid state storage area. Uh, so both of those um, uh, make a lot of sense. So let's talk about the performance difference. The, and that will typically be considered the big advantage to PCIe-based technology is if, if it's native, it has direct access, if you will, to the CPU. Uh, an appliance-based solid-state system has to go so, through some sort of storage network, so there's variables involved. But to, to claim outright that PCIe is always faster, or at least always significantly faster than a shared system is not exactly accurate. So let's talk about the performance differences uh, between the technologies. The, the general assumption is that PCIe is not only, uh, SSDs are not only faster, they're significantly faster. That, that may not always be true. Uh, it clearly, a native PCIe SSD is going to have an advantage that has direct access uh, to the um, processor, but it may not have a significant uh, performance advantage. Uh, now clearly in the shared SSD environment, there's more variables that we have to deal with because we've got a network, we've got a speed of this connection, we've got how well this, this uh, device down here handles multiple I.O. But to immediately assume that the PCIe SSD is always faster or significantly faster uh, might not be the best case. Um, for example, if, if this network here is uh, 8 gig fiber channel, uh, it's going to perform uh, pretty well. Uh, many of the appliances nowadays also have an option for uh, 40 gig InfiniBand. So that's going to perform very, very well. So at that point, you're starting to now talk about latency differences that are measured in the uh, small double digit microseconds, uh, not uh, anything larger than that. So at that point, there's not a lot of environments that are going to really notice a difference in microseconds of latency difference. Um, and then you add in the uh, advantages of a, of a shared device uh, as well as the ability to be very efficient in how you carve that device up um, might sway the advantage uh, this way. So our, our key point with the kind of a PCIe SSD versus appliance SSD is don't immediately assume that PCIe is the performance king. Uh, there are things that uh, vendors will do down here uh, that can greatly improve performance. But what you are looking for here is Obviously, this network itself has to be fast, and the way this appliance interfaces with that storage network has to be very efficient. So we're looking for the ability to have uh, direct native high-speed connections. Uh, we're also looking for the ability to uh, bond those connections together and also be able to manage those connections in parallel. Uh, so that requires some additional sophistication on the part of the appliance vendor so make sure that that's something that you look for as you're talking to these guys. Now, finally, the, the, the last area is when do I use what, right? That, that's a question we get all the time on almost every technology, but especially in SSD. Do, when should I use a PCIe SSD? When should I use an appliance SSD? And, and the answer is it really depends uh, on your use case. So I, I apologize that it just depends, but that's the nature of IT. Uh, what we tend to recommend is sort of a better together strategy. Uh, there, there are clearly times where moving data local uh, makes sense, uh, and there are clearly times where a shared uh, solution makes sense. If, for example, if you have a few servers that have a, uh, a, a very specific performance problem, it might be easier and quicker 
to just put PCIe cards in there and manage it that way. Uh, if you don't have an 8 gig fiber channel network or uh, don't have the budget to be able to invest in one, again, it might make sense to offload some of that uh, work to the PCIe. One of the advantages of PCIe Ethernet is that it takes the burden off of the network by being able to uh, install caching software and, lo and, and loading it, uh, loading the active data uh, there. Um, so it really comes down to sort of where are you in the storage buying cycle? Uh, what is your network infrastructure both now and in the future look like? And then where is your performance problem? Again, if it's isolated to a few servers, uh, there's clearly some value in PCIe SSD. Uh, if it's a, a broad uh, situation, like you have 150 uh, virtualized hosts or, uh, that are hosting virtual machines, um, then maybe a more appliance approach makes sense. So you, you really want to have the option to do either or both, uh, and, and it just depends on where you are in that cycle as to which one to get. But our, our key thing, though, is we really think that the technologies are better together, and so we recommend that you deploy both uh, as it makes sense. So it might start off by deploying just to fix a few servers and then eventually bring in a shared device that you apply more broadly across the data center. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Texas Memory, for sponsoring this video.